The crust is so easy to eat, man. It's like fluffy, it's chewy, it's crispy, it's gabagoo. It's a winner. That's a winner, y'all. Y'all, that's, yo, yo, that's a fucking winner. It's a wow. winner. You had to say the F word, that's how good it is. All right, so we've made it to Essex Market here on the corner of Essex and Delancey in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And we are here with our local Italian friend, Marco. I remember five years ago, this was just super old school, chilling on the corner of Essex and Delancey. Now we're in this fancy building. We gotta get in there. You hungry? I'm starving, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna go in there and we're gonna try as many authentic dishes from different cultures that we can. All right, so to fully understand the goal of Essex Market, we're here with Adam, which is the manager of this entire market. So the original market used to be across the street. We moved it over last year to preserve the cross section of the neighborhood. The original Essex Market was almost like 100 years old. How much of the same spots were you able to keep? So we kept only one vendor for retired from over there and we kept everyone else moved over and then we supplemented with other new new people from that neighborhood. All right, man, we're All ready right, to go with our first spot. Hey, what's going on, man? All right, I'm Matt. Matt, nice to meet you, Andrew. Andrew, nice to meet you. We make decadent sandwiches, started at Smorgasburg. Fired by our roots growing up in New York, delis, bodega sandwiches, lunch counter style food. All right, this is our first spot, Heroes and Villains. Here, we got their take on the chopped cheese, the big kahuna. Here they have Sando Carissian, and then here you got the spicy chicken sandwich. This is the face Yo, off. Yo, you know what I noticed, man? They love 80s pop culture there. This is the chopped cheese sandwich. This is the staple of the Lower East Side. You, you, you mentioned a sandwich I had never heard of called the chopped cheese. Yes. And so never... at Philly Brothers over here, it is the equivalent of, it, it is our cheese steak. Chopped cheese. This is amazing. Yeah. Ooh. So a chopped cheese is almost like mm. a Philly cheese steak, but instead of using steak, you use a burger, and then there's less ingredients. And even like, I love the chopped cheese. I, I feel a little hot sauce in there too. Did that capture the chopped cheese flavor? 100%. I never had pickles in my chopped cheese before, but it adds a crazy dynamic to the sandwich. You know Marco's from New York because you have so many opinions about the chopped cheese. I do. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the spicy one. I kind of want one. the spicy one too, honestly. Vietnamese, Vietnamese chicken, chicken sandwich. sandwich. I got more of the traditional joint. I'm trying the regular, I think they got a more uh, conventional. Oh my god, wow. They did it right with the potato bun. It's the greatest thing in this world. Though. Potato bun makes every sandwich better. It really does. All right, our next spot is Don Ceviche. It's a Peruvian spot. You have the Peruvian fried rice, AKA the chow fa. You have the Peruvian ceviche, and then you got the famous Peruvian roast chicken. This is Peruvian chicken with verde green sauce. Wow, this chicken is falling off the bone. Right off the bone, I say no, it's really good. The rotisserie chicken is amazing. Definitely one of the most uh, tender rotisserie chickens I've ever had, I think, before. That sauce, though, I might buy some later on. Guys, we're about to dive into the Peruvian ceviche. This is my favorite type of ceviche. Yo, that is one of the better ceviches I've had. We're in the Lower East Side, right next to Chinatown. Peru has a lot of Chinese and Japanese influence. So here's the chow pho, the AKA fried rice. Did you know that Peru is the only Western country that ever had a full Asian president? Really? I yeah, did not yeah. know that. Yeah, Alberto, I did not know Al that. Alberto Fujimori, full Japanese full dude who was the president of uh, Peru. Of Peru, wow. But then he got uh, jailed for corruption, so. <laughs> <laughs> Peruvian fried, fried rice. rice. Wow, that's amazing. All I'm saying is in Peru, wow. they use a wok. What's the difference between a wok and a regular like, skillet? A wok mm. can also be used okay. as a shield. Shout out to Don Ceviche, man. Delicious. Amazing. On to the next. All right, I'm, ah, I'm right. here with the people from... Milenone. 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 Okay, yes. what? Oh, you do this go. interview, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. We do Italian comfort food revisited in a healthier and uh, sustainable way. This is our organic uh, turkey bolognese lasagna with the lactose sweet bechamel. Potato gnocchi, which is like a dumpling, potato dumpling with our vegan pesto made it's with nice arugula, you. basil, sunflower seeds extra virgin olive oil, organic turkey meatballs made with uh, quinoa, spinach, lots of fresh herbs, uh, tomato sauce and pecorino cheese, the ricotta mousse with candy, orange zest and chocolate, and this is a panna cotta, which is a typical Italian dessert with a mixed berry compact with a little bit of cardamom inside. Thank Ooh, you so much. So much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Could you tell he was Sicilian? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, because he thinks the room is in the north. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Marco. Keep it real, bro. Do you think this organic Italian food is gonna be good? I'm skeptical, but I think it's gonna be good. Organic, organic turkey, turkey lasagna. lasagna. That's really good. I would never eat lasagna before I needed to go like play basketball or, or go do some physical activity, but I would eat this one. 
All right, guys, we're moving on to the potato gnocchi with vegan pesto. It's very good. I'm used to eating it differently. Tons of cheese on it and like sauce on it. Marco, you're a young guy right now, but when you get older, maybe this might be the way to lean towards. Honestly, I might have to because us Italians were collapsing at like 45 years old, so this might be a good way of life. All right, guys, this is the turkey with quinoa meatballs. I knew this is the one that made you skeptical. This was the one, yeah. Quinoa, quinoa turkey, turkey meatballs. meatballs. I like it. Definitely different from a regular meatball, obviously. You could taste like the plants in it. I actually like this one. Yo, I think this is my favorite dish of theirs. I got to say that I've never had anything like those. This is part of the diet now. This is part of the diet. <laughs> All right, I'm going in. Basil lemonade. That's a winner. It's a winner. That's a winner, y'all. Y'all, that's, yo, yo, that's a fucking winner. It's a wow. winner. You had to say the F word. That's how good it is. Mmm. That's Ooh, good. good. Dude, it's healthy. Try this panna cotta here. Mm. It's like almost really refreshing. But ultimately, you guys, I'm going back for more on the marmalade chocolate. Good. Meatballs. That was my favorite. I was most skeptical about that dish. I murked this turkey lasagna, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> cool. All right, we're here with the owner, Eat Guy Thai. You're from Thailand. Explain what we got. We're doing traditional khao man guy, but with a little changes from our way here a little bit. Fried chicken uh, khao man guy. This is a lemongrass chicken, but we put a sort of like a rub on it, so similar to a jerk chicken. And then you have that traditional one, which is the uh, Hainanese chicken. This is Thai jerk chicken khao man guy. It does have that jerk flavor. No, this is a good way of getting people into this dish. Marco, I gotta see you try this soup. <laughs> there it is. Ooh. Wow, you know what, guys? I'm gonna bring this home, man. See you guys later. Last but not least, hailing from Thailand by way of Hainan, we've got Khao Moon Gai. The Khao Moon Gai gizzards. Gizzards. Oh, wow. It's not bad, but whatever sauce that is, that's amazing. My, my mouth's on fire right now from that sauce. Yo, Marco, mm. you might need to wash that down with an Italian Asperol spritz. This is from uh, Top Hops. They have uh, 700 beers. Well, cheers to that, then. <clears throat> What's next? Okay, we're here with Red Juan from Zerza Moroccan Kitchen. So what I'm holding here is a chicken tagine. We take the chicken, marinate it overnight with herbs. This is the lamb tagine. This one right here is roasted cauliflower with tahini sauce and almonds. Guys, we gotta start with the number one dish, which is the, the, tic, which is the chicken tagine. Moroccan, Moroccan chicken, chicken tagine. tagine. That's delightful. I love it because it's spicy without being obviously that hot spicy. And man, there's a hint of sweetness. Yo, guys, we gotta get into this lamb shank right oh, here, bro. Way, Moroccan oh, lamb shank. Whoa. Let's try this roasted cauliflower with the tahini sauce. That is some of the best roasted cauliflower yeah. I've ever had. I didn't think it could taste this good, honestly. And it's really healthy for you. Guys, Moroccan food. That's it. Controversial question. We're having this conversation earlier on the street with somebody. <laughs> First of all, what's the difference between Puerto Rican and Dominican food? Not much. Sorry, but I believe Dominican is a little tastier. I mean, I love yeah, coconut. No, no, no. We all cook very similar because it's very the same spice that grow in the same lands. You, right here, you have um, totones with shrimp and peppers and onions. Okay. This is empanadas, empanadas so you have right. one of each of the ones that I sell in my store. And this right here, that's a patacón. Okay. So that's a tres golpe patacón that's based on a Dominican breakfast. This is lemonade, passion fruit, and guava. It's guava juice. It's good, but it is sweet. Oh, sweet. Shrimp, Shrimp and plantains. plantains. Oh, wow. It's actually not too spicy. It really lets the shrimp shine. A lot of butter. It lets all the peppers and onions shine. All right, here we got the pea salad. This is a plantain sandwich. Uh, Ooh, ah. Breakfast pea salad. Oh, you got the cheese on there too. That salami is so savory. That's that's way better than the regular salami. Yes, definitely. That, I mean the Italian salami. And, and <laughs> the cheese is fried cheese. Oh, so the cheese yeah. feels is that the mango. You know what? I'm I'm going blindside. I'm just going blind. Blind. All right, David, it. pick one. Eight and a half out of ten. This makes empanada mamas Shit. look like empanadas. Nada. Nada. Get him. Ah! The crust is so easy to eat, man. It's like fluffy, it's chewy, it's crispy, it's uh, dabaku. Wow. Dabaku. Honestly, I'm, I'm slowing down, but those are some of the best empanadas I've ever had. When I say things, I mean things. I'm a person where my words hold weight. The best, the best. 
this is how business is Puebla Mexican food. These are some al pastor tacos and chicken, chicken mole platter. So it's a traditional meal in Mexico that oh, everyone is. Especially in Puebla. Alright, so for our last spot, we got Puebla Mexican restaurant. I get a little so have you had mole before? It. Never had mole. You never had it. Chicken, chicken mole. mole. Very good. Very deep, earthy. But you know what I liked about it? It had a little sweet twist. Mm -hmm. That's my first like time ever having that. That was really, really good. Definitely gonna come back here. All right, guys, who wants to go with the Al Pastor? Oh, oh, they put the pineapple in there already for us. Al, Al Pastor. pastor. And like, also, this Pastor, yeah. cut off the spit, it's the Lebanese influence. Lebanese oh, immigrants okay. came to Mexico a couple hundred years ago or 150 years ago, and they influenced them to use the spit. All right, that wraps it up here at Essex Market. Um, Marco, you're a local here, you grew up here, you knew when it was across the street. What do you think about the new chain? I love the change, I definitely embrace it. We can interact with all the owners, all the vendors. And you know what, I think a lot of people, when this first opened, totally understandable, they were like, oh, it's like, dude, you're just putting up a huge, nice building in the middle of the neighborhood. But what they were able to do is bring the neighborhood here in. You know what, the only thing they're missing is the bodega cat. Where well, is I the cat? I've seen it upstairs, I think it's running around uh -huh. somewhere. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching that video. If you like that, make sure to hit that thumbs up, click subscribe, turn on your notifications, go check out Marco's information down below, follow him on Instagram. In the comments below, let us know another food market that you guys want us to try around New York. It's really interesting and it's always uh, really cool to see how they're doing things and the food that they're cooking. So until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Saying that this is particular like LES because they get their meat from the local butcher. You know, we grew up, you know, we didn't have this big corporation of foods. You know, we went to our mom and pop shop. He said, so it's really the culture's there, you know, and that's what I like to see in the Lower East Side.